Hello, this is Pat Kale from Pat Kale Metalworks, and today I'm going to make a anti-plastic cup bracelet out of reticulated silver. You just saw me finish off the reticulated reticulation with the torch, and um, you've also, if you go back to my previous video, you can see how you prepare the reticulation silver for reticulation. And uh, so I, I cut that part out. I didn't think we needed to do that. About, but I'll be showing you some other little techniques to make this look really nice. So here we are at our uh, stake. And we're going to start to form a curve, an anti classic curve, in this cup bracelet. And um, what you want to do is you want to start at the edges and work across, I call it a course, the one all the way across and then you go down the other edge, one all the way across and then you begin to push out the middle. Now looking at this I just realized one thing I didn't smooth off the edges so I'm going to cut here, I'm going to do that off camera. It's just filing and sanding so it's nice smooth on the edge here and the other side. And then I'll come back and show you how we form the anti-classic curve. Okay, so I curved off the edges. And I'm going to start my first course. So, as I said, one thing to do is actually begin to form the bracelet. And just take a bracelet mandrel. And curl it around. This is not that important, but you want to at least begin with a abrasive shape. It's going to distort quite a bit as we are making the anti-classic curve, but at least you have a starting point. So I just give it a, a semi-curve into it, and now we're starting. Articulated silver doesn't doesn't behave the same way as um, sterling silver or fine silver. It's a lot brittler, but you can do all the same things with it. You just might have to anneal it a little bit more often. I'm starting to form that first course. Okay. Keep bending it around and as you up as you're doing that course, you can put a, a you know tension on it. Because it's wanna it's gonna wanna try to come flatten out a bit. Okay, so that's my first course. And I'll flip it over. Start doing a second. If it's easier for you, you can turn it the other way around. If it's easier for you to work on this side and then work on the bottom. It doesn't matter either way. Okay, 
Okay, so now we have the two edges, and we can fix them up a little bit. It's gonna it's gonna deform again as you do in a second. Part, so don't spend too much time on that. coming in and, and trying to really curve out the middle now that I've done the two edges. You could take this a little slower and do two courses around the edges before you come into the middle and try to bring that nice and round, saddle shaped. And that's probably the proper way to do it, but This works too. And as you can see, we're starting to get our antiplastic shape. This is really a little bit, it's quite a bit tougher to work with. try to um, bend it as much as possible to make it look like a cup bracelet. And then we're going to get another stake that's uh, a little more curved here to uh, finish it off. So. That's what we have so far. It's, it's getting really hard to, to pound, so it definitely needs some annealing. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to turn it over, and as I turn it over like that, that becomes flatter, but we can deal with that. My edges turned over a bit so they start to really form the cup. You see how I see that that's being turned over, how this is becoming flat. So you gotta get in there, hold that. And just correct it a bit. Okay, so that's starting to come around. Might not look like much just yet, but gotta start somewhere. Okay, I think at this point I want to anneal it and then start with a second course with a different steak. So let me show you the steak. Just a second. So this would be our our second steak to use. Probably our final one. You can see how it's more curved. This one's flatter. So we'll be putting more of a saddle shape or anti-classic form into the cup bracelet. But I need to um, I need to anneal this. And sort of handle it a little bit just to form more of a bracelet. 
or cuff bracelet look. You can also, if you want, take our stake off and put on our cup mandrel and then use it to form the shape of the cuff. Now if you're going to do this, don't hit it on the sides and the edges. Just stay in the middle. That's the low point. And that's where It will sit on the, the mandrel without affecting your anti-classic form. It's going to affect it a little bit though. But you can see that um, that starts to bring it around to where you want to, you can start to believe that is indeed going to become a cuff bracelet. So I'm going to go with Neil. And I'll come right back to you with the, the next steak in the process. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back to do this more you know, sharper curve steak. And uh, just go around. What I'm doing here is folding that over on that piece so that stays down there. Then I can start working in the middle. And uh, I will say that annealing didn't do anything. <laughs> So you really want to, you know, squeeze it like that with your hand so that it keeps that bracelet-like shape and then hammer your anti-classic shape. Okay. So we just go around and do that. Okay, so we have it mostly formed here. Our cuff. It looks good. It looks a little funky in spots, but it's sort of the nature of this cuff. But we'll fix that up too. So the next thing I want to do is sort of hammer down the edges. And you don't need to be, you know, dainty here. Trying to form a surface, a little bit thicker surface right here, and I don't want to distort the um, our curve either. So the curves very anti classic curves are very strong, so they'll be able to hold up to this to a certain point. And then I want to do, you know, I I got rid of a lot of my um, my little wiggles. So I'm going to go with the other side, uh, the ball peen side of the hammer. Be careful, it's very easy to slip off of the, the edge. Just go around and you're not going to actually see a lot of difference here, but um, it is indeed widening out the edge itself and giving us a surface that we can play with later on.
There's a method to my madness, so you're just going to have to stay tuned to figure it out. Alright. I think that looks good. I see some spots that I might take care of a little bit later on. But what I want to do now is polish this baby up. I'm going to check it out and see. One thing about an anti-clastic shape is that you can twist it, but it's very hard to bend it. Either way, I mean, this is stronger than heck, but you can actually twist the anti-clastic shape like that. And that allows you to get at points on the ends and in the inside. So um, I'm just going to fix up a few little things here. I don't like this sort of... That just that just too exaggerated that that needs to be taken care of on the steak and that's about it though and just I'm looking to see the shape I think it looks about right but I want to take care of this so I'm gonna take care of this off camera then I'm gonna get back I'll show you a little bit of buffing and then we'll get to uh, the reason I've been doing all this banging on the surface and stuff. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so I have it all rounded off or all done like a cuff and the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, you know, I hammered the top a little bit to give it a little flatter surface. I'm now going to melt just the, the edge all the way around on both sides. So, the bean reticulation silver, it shouldn't be that hard, but it's going to take a while to warm up and then we're slowly melt just the edge. And you have to be careful when you're doing this because you can very easily melt it too much. Um, so just take your time, you'll see. Right now I'm concentrating on the whole piece. But very soon I'll transition to um, just the top. You can see a lot of that copper. There's, there's, there's quite a bit of copper in reticulation, reticulation silver. 20% so I think it's pretty much hot enough so now I'm going to start to go around the edge very carefully still trying to keep the whole thing nice and hot but now I'm going to start concentrating get my flame a little bushier Okay, it's starting to melt now. And watch it very carefully. Hopefully you'll see that. You see it, you can just see it just melting and you just want to do it that's enough. And then move on. Now this type of cup isn't for everyone. It's a little bit different than my, what I would call my style, which is very simple with clean lines. This is much more organic, much more um, brutalistic, I think is the term. But it looks nice and, and a lot of people really like this type of style. So again, I'm going along, I'm just melting that surface, trying to get little waves and little dips, building up the silver right on the edge, which will also make it really a, a strong cup. This cup will be 
a little bit difficult to adjust. You really need to make sure that you size it correctly for, you, for the wrist that is going on. Or hopefully it'll find just the right person. Okay, there, there we go. Alright. I think that looks good. Now that's going to have to go in the pickle for quite a while. You can see the ripples and the effect, and, and it, if you look closely, you can see that it's actually bigger or whiter at the edge. It's, it melted down a little bit and, and pooled. All right, so I'm going to let that pickle, and I'll be back. Okay, so here it is. I did it on the other side, too, so you can see how it's sort of melted and sort of pooled down and there's some thicker bits where it pooled and gives it a nice wavy sort of texture and what I want to do next is I want to burnish the edges so that I shine them up now you wouldn't want to use a polisher here because well, you might be able to get away with it, but I don't want to lose any of the detail in the inside here, so that's why I use a burnisher. And a burnisher is just you know, the same sort of tools that one would use to um, to fold over a bezel. Of course, I always use my plastic things, but I don't always. I, there's a lot of um, metal um, tools that I use to uh, to set a stone, but. To burnish it, you need a nice piece, very, very um, shiny um, metal. And you go along and you just rub it hard right where you want it to be burnished. And this burnishes the metal and makes it nice and shiny. Now, it's going to be hard to do this. But, you get the idea. I'm just going to go around like this. To get my hands out of the way. And all the way around. I'm not doing it. You need to be careful. Go step little bit by little bit. And... Let's see. I just hold it. Of course, it's going to slip off and hit my finger. But... This is the. This is what I go for to go through to to bring you videos. <laughs> so let's just try to get this corner here done. You can also use the edge too to you know really, really get it in there. And right now I'm concentrating just on the top. You also want to get around each side to not down into it, but just the side of the top, the edge of the the side of the edge of the top. Does that make sense? The side of the edge of the top. I think so. So from here on this side, I want to on this side of the edge of the top. <laughs> I want to go around and burnish it again. Take my time and bring out that shine. And you, you probably, you know, you want to brace it up against something. Um, you don't want to be holding it in your hand while you're doing this. So. And you also don't want to slip and put a nick in your, your surface that you don't want burnished. So you got to be careful of that. And this takes a little bit of time, of course. But you can see, I don't know, hopefully you can see the burnished effect here and here. And the more you do it, the better it will look and the more contrast you have. So I'm going to go around and burnish this baby all the edges. And not worry about having my hands in the middle of the camera. Like that. 
which you all you can see is this hand. So, anyway, so we're gonna go around. I'll quit fooling around now. We're gonna go around carefully, or I am gonna go around carefully and, and just burnish all the edges. See, that was a slip there, but I got away with it. No worries. Off camera, I can pay a lot more attention. But that's what we're gonna do. And I'll bring it back when it's done. And we'll see what it looks like. And that basically will be it. Okay. Okay, so it's basically done. If you can say that, I mean, burnishing, you can go on forever. You can constantly burnish. Well, you don't, it, 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 it lasts for a long time. I'm just saying you can just keep at it for a while. Looking at every little nook and cranny and trying to get it nice and polished by burnishing it. So, I hope you can see that with the camera. But, um, so here's our cuff. It's an anti-classic cuff with um, using reticulation silver where we burnish the edges all the way around and left the rest of it sort of matte to give it a better contrast. So thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope to see you again sometime. Goodbye.